Hello, guys. Hello. This guy's just crawling all over my makeup. Probably got cat hair in my sponge now. Hey, boop boops. Hey, babes. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hello friends, it's Urban Eve. I'm here to do a review of new Juvia's Place makeup that I received a few days ago. I got this from the Black Friday sale, which was just pretty much irresistible. Like I was on the page a few times and I was just like, no, no. And then I was just like, how can I not? I really needed to replace the concealer. I wear uh, the Magic Concealer in J12. That concealer is just amazing. So uh, ever since I've had it and it's pretty much done, I've been, you know, in my mind, I'm like, I have to replace this. Like I cannot have this concealer. Um, next to the Too Faced Born This Way concealer, which is one of my holy grails, uh, the Juvia's Place concealer is definitely in that holy grail lane for me. Like, I really love it. I picked up four things. So I picked up two of the shade sticks, the uh, Juvia's Place shade stick in Namibia and one in Mauritania. This is Namibia. So Namibia is for contouring. This one, Mauritania definitely is like tan with neutral undertones so that's this and I can tell just by looking at it it's going to be a cool like neutral undertone for me it's not going to be in the warm range and then like I said I replaced the J12 concealer but I don't even know if I'm gonna open this brand new one to see what I have left in my old one because I believe in using every little drop of every product that I have before I open the replacements so the fourth item I bought is the warrior 3 palette by Juvia's Place I just I just love this packaging. Uh, the illustration is just so beautiful. It is so emblematic of like the warrior woman spirit. You know, it reminds me of the Dora Milaje from Black Panther and I love it. It's just, it's just beautiful. It's just everything that I have always loved about the Juvia's Place packaging and the illustration and just the general like vibe of it. This is my seventh Juvia's Place uh, eyeshadow palette. So I feel like I've seen this color and this color, maybe even this color in some of their other palettes, but you know, not in this color story. So I'm still really excited to use it. I'm not really sure whether any of these colors are good for a transition. So I might have to go into another palette to put in a transition color, but I will be using this palette to create an eye look today. And I'm gonna start doing that right now. So for my transition color, I'm going to take this shade from the Natasha Denona nude mini nude palette and just go into my crease i've already prepped my eyes with the Too faced concealer in maple just to give it a base I think I want to, I really love this green right here. It's called Masai. Um, this one is in Zynga. This one is called Kahina. I like this one. This one is Jarawa. This one is Candice, which I'm like, um, okay, that's different. <laughs> this one is Fanti. This is Congo, Karama, and Gola. Not sure where Candace fits in here, but uh, Candace is a very beautiful, very deep, uh, pigmented looking purple. I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna start with this, like just above my crease, like in my crease and just above my crease. Okay, here we go, we're just gonna do it. Oh, 
Okay, that's nice. That's not too, too crazy. It's kind of like a rusty kind of brick colored orangey brown, which of course I love. I think I'm going to go in with Kahina. I'm gonna use this on the outer third. It's not really as dark as it's looking here, but I can build it up and make it a little darker. So I'm gonna take my same brush. This, by the way, is my Sigma Tapered Blending Brush, it's E40. I'm gonna take that same brush with Kahina. These blend really nicely, by the way. They're very soft. They there's no skipping and no fallout. So as you can see, it's not really that much darker. It's a little bit, but it's not like, um, excessively darker in the outer third. So it's not like an extreme shift from dark to light is all I'm saying. I'm gonna take Fonty and put it up here in above my crease. See what that looks like. I'm going to use, I'm gonna use a fluffy brush. So now I have to figure out what I'm doing for the main part of my lid. And I kind of want to do something that is different, a different color scheme than the rest. I'm not sure if Congo is it. Maybe it is. Let's try it. Let's try Congo. I should also mention that these two colors, Congo and Karama, are the only two shimmers on this palette and the rest of them are matte colors. So I'm just gonna actually take Congo with my finger and put it on my lid. Wow. Wow, that is so pigmented. Wow. So I'm going to take my Morphe uh, M17-10 brush, which is a flat brush for placing color and just kind of neaten this up a little bit. Neaten and blend as much as possible. So I also went in with this color Gola and put it on the inner part of the eye just to give the shimmer color a bit of a base. I probably should have put that on first. I'm going to do that first on this eye. And then I'm gonna go in with Congo. It's kind of a baby blue. It's not necessarily my favorite blue on me, but it is really pretty. So there is some fallout with the shimmer shade Congo. So next, I'm going to take my Wide Eyeshadow Brush by Sonia Kashik. I'm gonna take Gola and I'm just gonna go in to where my crease is and just press just to sort of blend a little bit with the color above my crease. 
this will blend everything together a little bit. I'm actually gonna go in with my finger with Congo again because I don't want to lose the sparkle of that shade. I want that to pop. I'm wondering about maybe using purple on the outer third. I'm gonna take Candace. Candace, you're gonna go right here. Just a little bit. Whew, that's vibrant. My God, okay, here we go. Oh, wow, oh, wow. Oh boy. Super pretty though. I mean, this palette is clearly not for, you know, daytime, like a neutral faint of heart look. Like this is like festival palette territory right here. Definitely evening, definitely like a big pigmented, colorful, deep, robust look. I think the purple, it, it, the, the purple contrast with the blue, it just, it really makes the look a lot more cohesive and it just makes it make more sense for me. Again, I'm gonna go in with the blue. I really kind of want to be strategic with the way that this blue um, stands out. I don't want it to disappear and I don't want it to be too much either. But I do feel like I wanna put something in the inner corner of my eye. Yeah. I'm wondering if there's a way that I can incorporate Karama. Let me try that in the inner corner. It doesn't look like a very like poppin' inner eye corner look, but let me just try it out and see. This is Karama. It's a very kind of like steely blue, but it has, it has some stuff going on it. It's got like purple, like to look at it, I thought it was just another like sparkly or shimmery gray color, but no, no. That's got something going on. I'm not sure if it's really going to show up but let's see. Oh, it's not bad. You probably, you might not be able to see it on camera. It's not bad, I like it. I think it finishes the inner eye corner well. It may not pop a lot. Kind of gets mixed in with the uh, Congo, but you can, you can kind of see it right here as compared to this one. I like it. Wow, this palette is really, it's actually a lot more than meets the eye. Looking at it, you're thinking that it looks one way, but these colors actually have a lot more to offer than what you see in the palette. And I, I love it. So remember how I said Mauritania had a neutral undertone? So. It's for tan skin with a neutral golden undertone, which is new for me. So let's see what that looks like. <laughs> I'm just gonna go in light for the initial application. And I'm using a flat top foundation brush by Sony Kashuk. This is not a bad match. 
I see the golden neutral undertone. I see that. And now normally this is all I would do because I've not been wearing that much. Like I wear foundation every day, but I don't like really, really put a whole lot on. But I'm gonna put a little bit more of this on just so that I can see how it performs with the most. Okay. I'm not, I'll put leftover on my forehead. I don't, I don't really put foundation on my forehead anymore either. By the way, it goes on very smooth. It's not dry. And the finish is pretty velvety, like a velvety matte. And so now I'm actually gonna go in with concealer before I go in with the contour. And like I said, I'm going to use my leftover J12 before I open my new one. Um, the Butterscotch and Too Faced is lighter when I want to go a little bit brighter under the eye, but this is actually like my perfect um, concealer shade. It reminds me of uh, Fawn, um, the LA Girl Concealer. These are my three concealers that I love. This concealer by Juvia's Place, the Butterscotch, and Too Faced, and Fawn by LA Girl. It's really good to have a few favorite different concealers in different price ranges, because if I don't wanna spend a whole lot of dough, um, I can just go to the drugstore and get LA Girl concealer. It's, it's affordable and it works and I love it. And then Juvia's Place is like the next tier and then Born This Way is like the most expensive, but they're all great and I love them all. So I'm gonna go in with a dose of colors, uh, blending sponge. While my powder is setting a little bit, I'm going to take Namibia and contour my face. Namibia is described as for dark skin with neutral undertones. I love it already. Yes, because it's not heavy and I'm super, 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 super paranoid about going too heavy with contour and blush. So this I can always build up, but because it has neutral undertones, I just feel like it's not gonna be overboard. So now I'm gonna take my Incy Wincy Teensy Little Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder and finish off my face and um, just kind of brush away some of the set powder. I'm gonna go back in with Namibia and do just a little bit more contour. I think it could show up just a little bit more. I think I just bought like the, the dupe shade for Fenty Beauty's Truffle in Juvia's Place, uh, Namibia, cause I'm just scared of too dark, of too dark contour. So that's basically the same thing. It's basically the same. But as you can see, I got really down to the end of this and I'm, I was like digging it out. So 
by the way the dubious place shade sticks are still on sale they are eight dollars so they're half price they were 16 and now they're eight so you know if you're curious at all grab them while you can So for lip gloss, I'm going to be using uh, Pretty Please from the Glossy Posse Mini Lip Gloss Collection by Fenty Beauty. This is a really awesome collection, by the way. If you want to see me swatch the colors from this collection, just let me know and I will do it. I'm going to set my face with Slay the Season Matte Finish Setting Spray by NYX. It's the regular NYX Matte Finish Setting Spray, but this one says Slay the Season on it, and it's got this cool thing that's just, it's like cardboard wrapped around the regular, the usual bottle. Um, I find this is a really great low-end setting spray for when I'm between the more expensive setting sprays, but I wanna not like, throw shade like this is a really good affordable finishing spray i i i like this spray this is one of my favorite setting sprays there i said it okay so i am back and these are my thoughts about the juvia's place uh products that i just received the shade stick i love it i mean what's not to love about this it, it's pretty much a dead match for me it is on the neutral side but the neutral golden element of it is quite nice I actually you know how I I like to be on the more warmer shade of foundation for my skin and you know I've been matched with neutral I've been matched with golden um the first foundation stick I ever used was by Anastasia Beverly Hills and it was called Golden, Cool Golden, I think it was called. So it, again, that combination of like neutral and warm really works well for me and I really like it. The, um, and this color again, just to remind you, is Mauritania. This is the shade stick of Juvia's Place that I'm wearing. Now, the color that I picked for a contour doesn't really show up that much. But neither did Truffle in Fenty, which I used for contour as well. So that might be a good thing for me. I don't like a whole lot of, I don't want it to look obvious. So I think that I still have to find uh, a color for contour that shows up a little bit more than this that I feel comfortable with. The the application of the shade sticks, again, it's very, it's it's a creamy formula. It kind of just glides right on. It uh, it blends really well. I like it. I I like it. Again, I it's it's 2.08 right now. I think I'm leaving the apartment today. In any case, I will just wear it you know, for a few hours to see how it holds up and maybe come back and give you a review of that as well. Um, but right now, just on first application, I think it looks fabulous. I think it looks great. Uh, the Warrior 3 palette. This eye look, I'm so happy with the way that it turned out. Mostly because the colors, the colors are beautiful. The colors are fantastic. Mostly I'm happy with the formulation of this eyeshadow palette. It, it just, everything goes together so well. It blends together well. There was no skipping. There was some fallout on the shimmers, but that's not that big a deal. That's not a complaint. It's just something to be aware of. 
Um, I think that the colors that I picked, they went, they really work well together. I used Congo, I used Karama, I used Kahina, I used Jirawa, and I used Candice on the outer third. I love how it came out. I think that it came out beautifully, but it feels like it's been a long time since I bought a Juvia's Place palette. Perhaps it's been a while since I did a review on a Juvia's Place um, eyeshadow palette. And this is, a, this is a beautiful palette. The concealer you already know I love. I just basically replaced it. That concealer is amazing. It's almost very, very close to my own, um, my own shade. So it's not really a, a highlighting um, concealer for me, but it's really wonderful at evening things out. And I can just brighten with powder or, you, or layer on another um, concealer. And that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Juvia's Place uh, Concealer, Shade Sticks, and the Warrior 3 palette. Let me know if you've picked up any of these products yourself, if you're looking to, if you have any of them already, and what you think of them. I'd really love to hear. Hello, here I am out and about at a poetry reading in Harlem. Not a club. I, mean, I know it might sound like a club, but it's not a club. I am a, I'm not that cool. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to check in. It is 7.51 right now. It was 2 o'clock when I did the video. And I would say that the foundation stick from this place is holding up pretty well. I mean, you can see my oils kind of coming through, but it's not greasy. It's pretty much what I would expect at this time of the day for this many hours. I still like it. This eye color, loving it more and more. Really, really loving it. So that's basically it for my review of the Julius Place foundation sticks and the Warrior Palette 3. And of course, I love the concealer. Like, the concealer is bomb. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.